companies also found success with engage comps. Remember, they were yeah. playing a ton of assassins. They were having St. Vicious with engage champions. That's how they like mm -hmm. to play. And Winter Fox also found a lot of success with like Cassid in mid and triple dives with Avalon on a tank. That's but Cassid's true. out of the picture. Pole Belter has to find something else. Right. We also saw them putting Pole Belter on things like Lulu and whatnot. Not his normal carries. Like you were saying, those Cassidans and the champions of those like will be the ones for him to carry on. Hecarim getting banned out. We've been seeing a bit of the horse on the field lately. That Fizz as well, not so much, but still respected here from Winter Fox over on Gravity's side. Yeah, a lot of top lane bands coming out here yeah. from Winter Fox, whereas Gravity, a little bit of a flex there, so a lot of top lane bands. I would be surprised to see Alessandra as well. There it is off the field. So, so far, four top lane bands across the map. These teams, Gravity, it's really hard to ban them out because they're trying so many mm -hmm. new things. So Victor will still be on the field if Keen wants to bring that out again. Poe Belter could also bring that yep. out. We'll have to see what he does. The Kennen definitely banned out there. We saw the initial fight that Winter Fox had yesterday in their game. That haunting guys build straight off from Avalon was interesting, but delivered the damage for the early game that they needed. Cannon builds are kind of up in the air. People, they are. People are like, let's build Rylai's Crystal Scepter in that last It scares game. me because I'm just like, build a Zanyas, please. <laughs> I feel safe. You feel safe. The people are happy, and that's what counts. <laughs> yeah, your, your enemies don't feel safe. <laughs> no, exactly. That's what you want to achieve with that. So now we're into the picks. Seeing all the bands out, we did get Morgana as the last one after that, Lissandra. So more top, Zyrene. More top and flexi. Flexi picks all around. That's true. There's a lot of things still left up, though. The top lane is very robust in terms of champion pool. Maokai, you also have Nar still available. There is that Rek'Sai, however. Nidalee still on the field here. We haven't seen Helios kind of take that too much under his wing. Actually, I believe that will be no times that he's done that. We do still have Jarvan and Viap, so if they want to go for the dive composition, we've seen Winter Fox loving. They have a Maokai and possibly a little bit more with that Vire Jarvan. Yeah, Helios hasn't picked up the Nidalee just yet. We've seen mm -hmm. him only on things that are dive buddies with Avalon, the Vi, the Rek'Sai, the Jarvan, things that can go in and close that distance, yeah. back his brother up. Yeah. See Paragon Comfort coming in here. Corky gets locked in one more time, which makes me think they may go for the 2v1. He was very safe in that Corky play, almost split pushing at times when the team was trying to just kite fights for him to get that farm up. St. Vicious locking in the rumble for Haunter. These guys have a bit of that objective control now if they can get themselves into place at the right time. And we have Bunny Fufu's Thresh on the field, so there's some plays to be made there for sure for him. Definitely keeping your mid lane picks for way further yeah. down. Gravity and Winter Fox, a lot of bands towards top lane, and then they immediately pick up top lane champions. And look at that. Again. Well, he was saying, Keen, you're not going to get it three times in a row. I want to play it two times in a row now. So Poe Belter actually takes back on the victor. You only get two in a row, <laughs> and then you have to hand it off. It's 2x victor, and then you're just BMing. You can't play it three times in a row. You're, you're hogging it. At this point, though, I'm very interested to see what Keen is going to play into this. You know, Hecarim is also a Keen pick, so it's a double ban when you ban it against Gravity, because yeah. Monster plays it, Keen plays it. And Victor's biggest weakness is Assassins in the mid. So something like a little Blanc might work out for Keen, or if he's going to go with a completely different style, and they'll go like, Oriana. We'll have to see what he does, but the Victor is most vulnerable to gap closing assassins. Now, a lot of people see or have not seen Victor. Will Victor carry the game for them if Poe Belter gets going? Victor can carry a game once you make it to the middle of the game. Once he gets that level 13, so it kind of has to be upgrades. optimal early, early game. Exactly. All right. Poe Belter can make that happen. He plays safe and can also control good CS throughout the first 10 to 20 minutes. There's that LeBlanc you were talking about for a bit of that pressure back onto him, that assassin style play. Cop picks up Graves as we wait for Winter Fox to round out the composition now with their support. Very interested. Yep, there you go. Lots of Leona. Okay, so he goes straight forward. I was like, Jana and Leona, one of those two for Altec yeah. here. He wants to go hard though. He's not disengaging any fights. So locked in, like, yeah, like you said, got to go hard. We just saw Alltech on the screen, and we, he was talking about how he likes to play so the team can get something out of it, make sure that he can get Paragon fed, and then Paragon makes plays off of his. He's got it right, and it's always easier said than done. They just got to make it work in a game now. 30 seconds on the clock as these guys talk about what they want to achieve last in their compositions. What will we be seeing from these teams? Well, Winter Fox's team is more of the same, except Poe Belter, he can carry on that victor. Yeah. But they have the Dive Brothers top. They also have Avalon, I'm sorry, Paragon and Altec 
both of them synergizing on extremely aggressive types of champions that want to go forward. Corky, not so much, but the way Paragon plays it, he <laughs> is extremely frontline oriented. Then you look over at Gravity's team, right. and these guys have the Rumble, the Rek'Sai, the LeBlanc. These, this is a mid-game comp that wants to tear you apart early and then just continue to secure objectives. That is a... That's a hearty handshake you, you, you right there. First. <laughs> it's, yeah, you stop. You stop I'm not stopping until you stop. I can shake your hand better. Ready to get in the only, game? It's only awkward. Yeah, you ready? I don't want to get in the game. Let's get into the game, everybody. We're just about to get into this one and get that Twitter account loaded up because we're looking to see who you think is going to win this match. Send hashtag GV winner, hashtag WFX win to at LOL Esports. The crowd's ready. Let's get into game four. The Rift is waiting to be scuttled upon. Ooh, there's already things. It doesn't get scuttled on for a couple minutes. That's true. Time. That's true. That's why the players will scuttle first. There you go. That's right. They're all very lively. They're actually scuttled a little faster at the start. That's, yeah. Get out of the base, scatter! Gotta go, gotta go fast. So we'll see who can get in a position, expecting those deep wards to figure out where the lane swamps will be, if we get any. But like we said, Paragon likes to have that safe early. Corky is usually swap. Well, here's the thing though, Winter Fox were able well, to capitalize true. off were, level one. They were the aggressive. Bait. They were aggressive. the exact same thing. That's the same ward they placed yesterday. It's just mirrored because they're on the opposite side. Yep. And now they're all sitting in this brush. It's, is it going to work twice? It doesn't look like it's going to work twice because they're on the complete opposite side of the map. But hey, if, you, if it worked once, it almost <laughs> had you beat TSO. Don't change it. Don't fix it. Just it, let it go. It ain't broke. So it looks like they're going to be actually keeping it safe on their side. Like you said, it's what they did against Team Solo Mid. Able to pick up a few kills. Even with those kills, though, you still have to mention, we saw 1-0-1 one, one go to Avalon in the top lane. Those two kills that they did get across the board, one was also to Alltech, didn't actually help them too much in that early game. It's not something they were able to control. Yeah, it really got out of hand after Bjergsen turned online mm -hmm. and just walked around with the Zed. I think we heard Lust Boy saying the same thing. You know, they weren't that scared about it. They knew they had the stronger late game. So Winter Fox has to know these advantages need to be pressured immediately once they get them. Gravity is also a team that won't let you get too far if you're being resting on your laurels when you do get those. Yeah, you can't sit on just a gold lead that you got from off of First Blood. The game is not over that soon. Despite what Solo Q might tell you, <sighs> it's not over off, off, off First Blood, especially before three minutes. So it looks like it, it will be quite mirrored. Winter Fox enters into Gravity's Jungle to start, and on the other side, the same. So this is going to leave now Pole Belter and Alt, or Keen rather, I should say to fight each other in the mid lane. We'll see if Keen can actually get an advantage with that assassin play on the victor. It's actually very interesting here how Winter Fox decided to do this because Hauntzer was starting the Wolves by himself. St. Vicious gets the solo experience mm -hmm. on the camp. Then if you look at Winter Fox's side, they didn't have the Maokai start at the Raptors to take that camp on their side. Instead, True. they pull him up to the top and they have a triple jungle with the support for a little bit for Winter Fox's side. So a little bit more split experience there. Or not split experience, but at least right. they are just allocating everybody there, and they're leaving their solo laner as the AD carry. All right, so Hauntzer to the top lane. I was actually going to say we see a lot of top laners go back, thinking it's that time. And sometimes it'll cost them their life. Sometimes it costs them just staring at the wave, hoping they're in range to get that. And you can still see Avalon is with Helio still. They're sharing that experience. So you're going to see now Hauntzer roaming around trying to find if there's anything left in the jungle. Brother Just the ward for safety, rather. They crack open a scuttle crab together. <laughs> Gotta share it. Yeah. But right now, it's just about the wave mm -hmm. clearing, the wave freezing as well. Because right now, gravity have a freeze that's moving towards them bottom. And up top, this freeze is actually moving towards the opposite side as well. Yep. So both top lanes are in great, both lanes are in great positions. Great what stick there. You can kind of see how the distortion would really mess with the pole belter's laser if you can't target that right, and then you just kind of flash backwards. It's hard to hit on something that's so mobile. And yep. the fact that you're nev almost never going to hit your W onto a LeBlanc because of her mobility is very big. You're never going to get that gravity field off. I like that by Hauntzer, actually keeping his gauge just at a level where he can do some max damage even though he got pushed out. Keeping himself safe there would definitely help if he gets the 3v1. He might be able to take someone down in the act. Paul Belter still scoring some laser shots as he can, but Keen is definitely keeping up in his face and trying to keep those distortions on point. Just trying to poke him out yep. as much as possible. He's all ran right. through all his potions at this point. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see in the beginning. 
especially when you get them under their turret constantly. Let's see, Paul or Keen actually already backing Pink Wards, coming out for Saint and Keen. Helios has already picked one up actually, and they've placed that towards their blue, so they're actually expecting that bottom lane of Cop and Bunny Fufu to be getting in there with some wards. It's actually very interesting that he backs that early because he had the lane pressure, he had the potion advantage, and once you just keep trading with Poe Belter and whittle him down to the point where he is forced to back and mm -hmm. miss a wave, instead shoves the wave, backs, tries to get back very quickly, and he's going to do that right now. So he's going to clear this wave as fast as he possibly can on Keen's side and try to have this crash against the turret. Nice ward in the bottom lane, thwarting out Helios. And they actually have to leave the lane together. They know it might be more advantageous to get themselves in the jungle and keep sharing that experience. Pushed up on the top turret now, Paragon and Altec. More kind of worried about the CS and just a few shots on the turret. Doesn't look like they're trying to take it down too quick. That ward as well that Helios placed actually stopped Saint from getting one of his own in there. This has been Great a very, job. very standard, very equal early game. Nobody's made a big mistake that's been capitalized on at all. Right. So they're neck and neck just in terms of gold, in terms of CS at this point. Across the board, nobody's getting a big advantage. Which is good to see, because after what happened yesterday to Winter Fox, or sorry, Gravity in the mm -hmm. top lane after a hard shove and a hard push on a turret, they don't want to get that type of lead over to the other side again. Well, we'll see if Winter Fox can get out a gank here, as well as St. Oh, Vicious. He's Bunny towards, foo -foo. was the top side, but now sees Helios in the jungle. They're going on to Avalon in the bottom here. They actually get the hook onto him. I don't know if there's going to be too much follow up there, but a little back and forth. That was a flash blown, so that may be a return. I was actually just about to mention the top laners. This is kind of the time we see when people are going to go top and going to start trying to get that gank in. Yep, again, around that time, you see Altec, he's very aggressive, but look at that, the Wolf Spirit stalking them. They, they are very aware of what's going to happen to this top lane on Gravity's side. The Whisper of the Wisp, slowly telling Hanser that he needs to get out alive. Strength in the mid lane from Keen, knowing there's a whole slew of people top lane, so he can go a little bit more aggressive. And they're taking small advantages here. Gravity's going to be going for Dragon. They allocate a lot of people to the Dragon, just two mm -hmm. here from Gravity. But that's two people who aren't going to be around the top lane. And it looks like they're lane swapping it back. Once you hit this time, around seven minutes is when the turrets drop their fortification buff, where they take 30 less damage from basic attacks from champions. Yeah. So you get your BF Sword, you get your Sheen, and then you lane swap it back so that you can now shove down turrets. Because if you don't, there's a big threat to your own. Well, Dragon going over to Gravity. Nicely, just around seven minutes. Seeing that BF Sword picked up by Cop and Sheen on the side of Paragon. We'll see how they work that. Pole Belter's first back was actually that Negatron Cloak. He was definitely feeling the pain. We'll probably turn that right into an Abyssal Scepter. So Victor's not going to dominate you very very early on. Right, the game. right. That's the buildup. It's, it's level dependent, it's upgrade dependent, and item dependent. And going for the Negatron Cloak is not terrible. It's not like a LeBlanc going for a Negatron Cloak first back because she needs to have a special, specific curve to the way that she plays, like dominate early, then transition that into mid game, late game. And how often do we see kind of uh, a change in what the Victor will spike or try to level first? In terms of ability. More so the laser oh, upgrade. And yeah, you, you will upgrade the laser first, and you will upgrade that with your prototype into the next one, the Mark 1, because of the fact that it gives you 40% more damage on the E. Then you, mac then you get the Q upgrade later, but the reason you don't get the Q upgrade first is because it's not a low enough cooldown until you get level 13, because you max it second. Okay. Otherwise, the movement speed is just a, a waste. Definitely not a champion. Tons of people play, but always good to know what Pole Belter and what's going or what Pole Belter is doing and going through his head through the process. Picking up Blue here. We'll see if he has a better time against Keen in the mid lane, who just got the same treatment from Saint Vicious. He's actually pretty hurt after Gromp, so we won't see him back into the jungle. We may actually see Helios. It looks like he's going to take the same hit from Gromp as well. So the jungler's out, still waiting for these guys in the mid lane to go at each other if they even will. More so onto Keen for that fact. Yeah, at this point though, there was a little bit of advantage that's made itself clear, and it's the top lane. Right. Winter Fox shoved that lane in and then gave over Dragon to Gravity, and Hanser was just free farming under the turret when they were lane swapping it back. And Avalon didn't have that luxury in the bottom lane. And now he's in a matchup up top mm -hmm. that isn't very favorable for Maokai. It's a little bit back and forth. Yeah. Rumble has a lot of kill potential on him, but Avalon has more gank pressure potential. Definitely impressed by the fact that Hauntzer kept it so safe up there with the fact that he went so early as well. Keeping the range and keeping 
in range enough for the oh. experience. Nice. St. Vicious stopping it back there. I don't know if this is going to turn into too much. That's a great placement <laughs> of the gravity field, and they can't get too much more out of it. Got to snap back a little faster than that. Yeah. Took a turret shot for it. Now they get to shut this wave out. Poe Belter has to back. They get his flash. A lot of pressure exerted on this mid lane. This is actually the first big move that we've seen that's resulted in some type of advantage other than a dragon. And we just saw both Saint and Helios back. So coming out of base, Saint definitely wanted oh. to make something happen. They draw three people to the middle to start damaging this turret. So Winter Fox are actually going to lose this turret in the mid lane. And Gravity are going to pick this up off of the Saint Vicious gank yep. onto the immobile champion of Victor. But look at this, they're gonna answer it up top. Haunts or no flash? There was the flash blown. That was probably from Altex Engage. The Cataclysm sticks. They use quite a bit to take him down. He tries to get the Rumble Ultimate out just in the end. This looks like it could be scary. Yeah, they're trying to collapse here three on three in the top lane. They got rid of that middle turret. Yeah. But turrets are worth more than a kill. So they actually come out on top on Gravity's side. Now they get all this pressure over Victor and when you free up a LeBlanc to have different roam mm. routes to other lanes, it's very dangerous and it allows her to start snowballing. And those roams are only going to get shorter once they start knocking down these outer turrets. A lot easier to roam through the small part of your enemy's jungle than back through the river, back through the river. Yeah, and that's something that Keen was always known for back when he was over in Oceania, was yeah. his roam timings. The fact that he would show up at the weirdest times when you aren't expecting it. And the communication on gravity to communicate where wards are and when they are down, is going to be very important for him to get these ganks off, to get these roams off, and get his LeBlanc snowballing. Well, they only have the one forward ward for now, just behind the red of Helios on their top side. So, won't be seen out just yet. Helios looks like they may actually be trying to get their first forward wards in here. He may be providing safety for all tech as they go right around towards the Raptor camp here. They're actually putting a lot of members to this, so I think Gravity knows this is happening. They saw, they saw them run in there yeah. with the side ward. They don't know how far they went, but you can see Keen sweeping nope. that one out. They don't want to get in any scary situations. They don't know they left, though. Because, That's true. Because that ward that was placed in the side bush in mid was avoided by Fog of War. Now there's a lot of people down bottom on Winter Fox's side. This would definitely help to get the game going. Maybe if Pole Belter was here as well, Winter Fox. Trying to capitalize on something here after losing mid turret. We're definitely hoping help to open up the map, but again, kind of just walks away. This has been happening for both teams. They approach a situation and nothing really comes out of it. Another camp coming up to the top lane, this time on the opposite side. Trying to help out Hanser. Shh. So close. Nope. Huh? They're going to go for it. Go. He's going to throw down the ulti. If he, he gets a good splash. twisted advance here, he can actually dodge quite a bit of damage. That's the pop-up. He get twisted advance actually right out of the Rumble ultimate, Saint. but he can't because Keen Ooh. comes as well. They're able to lock down that kill onto Avalon in the top lane. It took a, quite a bit of time to get that one down, but they finally start to spark things up. Very quickly, out of the aggro range of the turret, it just swapped over yeah. away from St. Oh! That's what we need to start seeing. If the ultimates are blown, that means options are going to be open for other teams to go in. Right now, Cop and Bunny Poo Poo still have to be a little afraid of the crowd control provided from all tech, so they back off. But here now comes the roam from Pole Belter. We may start to get a little bit more action. And Helios coming to this bottom lane. They saw LeBlanc top. They know that threat is gone. Now, instead, they're going to shove the mid lane on Gravity's side, and Winter Fox are going to try to pressure the objectives on the bot side of the map. I think this might turn into uh, could be our first dragon. We have a walk to lane for Avalon, which means the teleport will still be up. And the roam already from Keen has put himself on the bottom side of the map. And they're trying to get Keen wrapped around. Yep. Trying to get him all the way down here. There's a TP from Avalon. Teleport TP, most efficient type. So he'll actually get a good cooldown off of that. But it will not help with the turret or a fight. It may, however, start to bleed into this dragon. Right now, this is a, a timing thing. Because they're going to get this turret on Winterbox's oh, side. It. Gravity are going to yeah. try to press top turret with Hauntzer, try to take that. But in the meantime, Gravity are going to shove middle, top lane, and Winter Fox are going to go for the Dragon, which will be their first of the game. See how much they respect that Dragon and see how many they leave. It's not a worth trade they're, if they get any of these turrets, though. They're actually backing off of that. They put a pink ward onto Dragon, and they may still lose a good amount of health on this turret. That's going to be huge. prepped for an easy takedown. 
top if Gravity wanted to return. Top lane, that's going to be an easy hit for Hauntzer. He's also got a wave to work with there and a rotation up now from Bunny Fufu and Keen to keep it safe. Looks like they'll just be there to back. The threat of Keen coming down for the roam caused the teleport from Avalon, and Keen had already shoved mid lane out. So he just returns to it, shoves it, gets that pressure, and Hauntzer holding on to his teleport yep. and shoving up the top wave to get them a turret. Now, because of all the backs, this middle turret's going to go over to Winter Fox. They're just exchanging objectives right yeah. now. I'd say that's good for Winter Fox. A little bit behind with uh -huh. the Maokai right now. They're going to walk straight into Rumble here. They know he's there. Oh, another missed Solar Flare from Alltech just on the outside, though. Looks like everybody has the better of him. They look like they're about to be on point, but they just step outside. Oh, they, they threw so many people up to the top side of the map to just deal with Hauntzer there. Throw out the Leon ultimate. It's the perfect time to go ahead and take this dragon. Look at this Hauntzer from the side. Oh, he actually flashes directly onto the Rumble ultimate. Still slowed. Going to be taken down. The shield won't give him any assistance there. And they could keep going. Helios then on to Hauntzer as they trade a little bit back. What a crazy fight. Paragon Valkyries forward just to get the heal off to possibly save Poe Belter. It yeah. doesn't work out. And his consistent damage. He gets hooked by Bunny Fufu and turned the opposite direction. He actually got a kill, Pole Belter did, that is, off of that one. So the Ignite came up big for him as Helios went in for the gank. Let's see as they fight over Blue now. Gravity is starting to push the buttons of Winter Fox here and not giving them too much room to breathe. The wards are more so to the top side. They don't have the vision as much as they want there. It's just behind the Blue and they cannot see what they want. Gravity, they're going to have to start pressing into these tier twos now. They got that second dragon, so they do right. have the turret destruction available to them. So if Winter Fox misstep again and let them get to that tier two inner turret, this is a composition that if you give them this gold in the mid game, the rumble, the LeBlanc, it's going to start taking over. It's one of the things that's rough when you play against the rumbles. Even if it's kind of a rough game and you're like, yeah, we can fight, he's just going to throw out equalizers at the turret. It's no really way on the rumble to player there. there. Yeah. It's really on the rumble player yeah. at that point to throw out the equalizers in an appropriate manner to make it hit as many people as possible. Because you've seen fe Fed Rumbles throw it off to the side, and then it's just, oh, it's nothing at that point. Blame it on SmartCast. Yeah. Smart. Even the World Champs did it. <laughs> or people at Worlds, I should say. At that point, it's not SmartCast. It's, <laughs> it's DomeCast. It just flies <laughs> off to the side. Well, it didn't, I didn't even point it there. But the, the thing this game, though, is Haunter's off the ground. Even though he's in a lane swap situation, he's yep. at 100 CS at 16 minutes. He's in good shape, and he has both of his spell penetration items that he needs to start almost doing true damage to people. So this Rumble is online for the mid game at yep. a good pace. This would be a really big game for Grav or for Winter, yeah, Gravity to win, I apologize. They have TSM starting next week, so this Winter Fox game would be a good boost. Ooh. They lost to CLG yesterday, so definitely need to get the wins over these teams in the middle of the pack. They themselves, six and seven. Rek'Sai is not here, this is a four on five, so St. Vicious is gonna have to come up to this top lane, use his ultimate. Good. Before this possible fight breaks out, yep. though, Poe Belter actually went for the full upgrade of the perfect yeah, X core. He did. Which I think is suboptimal. Why is that? Because he doesn't have enough ranks and abilities to really make it worthwhile just yet. Getting the second upgrade is perfectly fine. The vacuum on your W is okay. I but like you it. really just need the two. It's too much gold to dump into this item before you get something like a death cap. Usually. And, and I think the optimal build is go one upgrade, get your, your death laser. Yeah. Then get yourself a blasting wand, get yourself an easily large rod, because you're going to get that around your level 11, level 12. Then you upgrade your Q. And then you continue from there. Because you'll be around level 13, and then you can make use of that. So the perfect hex score is a lot of, he's adding a lot of utility to his kit. Right. He's not adding that front loaded damage. So he's kind of hoping, for the most part, that fights don't break out for a while. And if he does, then, I mean, it's a very risky build. It's definitely his choice. It's not like he's been put in a super rough situation, right? Yeah. He had, he had a bit of a, a hit early game, but it's still 155 to 153, and he's got a kill. All that happened was he died. So still definitely able to put up some numbers in the game. We'll see if the build has the reasoning behind it once they get into these fights, obviously. And, and the perfect hex core actually gets more AP based on your character level. So uh, buying it later... It's, makes it's, more sense as well there. Yeah, it's a little more AP, a little more bang for your buck at that point. It's not as stat efficient when you buy it early mm -hmm. on. So just just throwing more things out there for the Victor players, the people who want to pick Victor up. Absolutely. 
Looking at Haunter in the top lane, definitely stat efficient with it. Leandries and Sork Shoes finished. Already has an ability to him to keep going on to his next item as well. 113 to 179 there. We talked about wave management, and it seemed like it was cleared up a little bit in this game, and it went in gravity's favor. They didn't have the same type of pressure where it's bouncing off of a turret, and you have to make sure that you don't damage the turret right. more than the minions. Because <laughs> then at that point, it's like, oh, the turret's dead, and you still have some minions alive. Yeah. And then it pushes out, and it becomes a very disastrous situation where you have to push it to tier two and have it bounce all the way back. So Hauntzer, definitely in a much better situation than he was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Playing a big role. He is able to control the situation. He got out of situations where it looked like three to four people would gank him in the top lane. Head is in this one for all of gravity right now. And they're trying to keep it going. Still, though, wave clear and wave management is a throughout the entire game thing. You have to keep tabs on. So let's make sure they don't fall to the wayside with that. We'll keep an eye on it. 20 minutes in. It's only two to two as these guys, it seems like they've kind of been at each other's throats here back and forth, just not finding the fights that they want. It's these outer turrets that, since they've gone down, yeah. the fight, the points where you would find a fight are very slim now. They have this mm -hmm. one turret left in the top lane for gravity. Meanwhile, Keen, he's pushing down bottom, and then St. Vicious and Bunny are shoving mid, and he's going to clear this wave with an equalizer. Out of position here for Winter Fox. Could be a nice swipe. They're going to have a hard time getting back to their bottom side. It could be the turret going down at least. Great wards yep. and vision placed here by Gravity. They know they aren't going to get too much more out of it as the rotation's already happening over from Winter Fox. So backing on this one, this is good, though, to see from Gravity because they now have Winter Fox kind of on the end of their rope. They're saying, we're going here. you got to follow us. We're going here. Now you have to follow us. It, Winter it, Fox kind of has to get them going to be to their own drum. It's a test of the shot calling to get the momentum back in your favor. Just when a team starts rolling, they're like, oh, we got some turrets. We have inside track on map control. We have the wards in the right places. Wrestling that back from them yeah. is very difficult. You can match them, but then being able to overcome their movements and then reapply pressure to the opposite, to the other team is very important. Like right now, Winter Fox, they were trying to go top. Then Gravity was like, nope, we're going to go middle and bottom. You have to answer us. And then Winter Fox answered them just in time and don't lose anything. And then Gravity didn't make another move. They weren't like, Hauntzer, keep shoving top. Keep applying yeah. pressure to pull them back. So they didn't continue that assault. And instead, we're like, we should back up, possibly look for a fight in the near future, and look at this King. King's doing damage to this turret, but they want to fight here. He already got it. Just getting pulled around left and right. Top wave is going to start pushing in favor of gravity as well. Figured that would be a good place for Avalon to be. Oh, they're all grouped up. Hunters, oh, right down the channel. That was a beautiful equalizer. Everybody's pretty much forced to disengage from Winter Fox on that one, and Gravity just starts picking their targets left and right, only able to find Helio still in range. Keen should be okay on this one. Another dark passage to the light there from Bunny Fufu for Keen, and what a start by Hanser to that one. It's a great time to pick a fight, too, because the dragon was coming up, and now they get to take it without a contest. Amazing equalizer. We were talking about how the equalizer is on the Rumble player at that point. You have your items. He's Gotta online. You gotta land it perfectly, and that was a really good equalizer, blowing a lot of flashes. And see where Winter Fox focuses. They have how many wards towards the top side of this map? Everything's going on at the bottom. Gravity was really able to take that because all eyes are around the bottom side of that map. And Three, four, five, six wards in a pink. Yeah, that ward coverage is going to allow them to see the movements and also react accordingly. Like right now, if they see Avalon top lane, mm -hmm. it's clear to back. He has to deal with this wave. They get this free recall because of the yeah. wave they shoved up. Now they get to buy their items, they get to purchase, and then re continue their assault. They got that middle turret down, which these this is your ideal lane to shove up because it gives you better tracks to move between top and bottom once you get the ward coverage. Gravity definitely wanting to get the win back on this one. This match happened all the way back in week one and was the win for Winter Fox. That was Pole Belter. Rocking the Fizz that game. What was he? Seven, zero, and six. That was actually banned by Winter Fox this game because they didn't want to go against the Fizz either. So that was a uh, Fizz was a little different <laughs> back then. This is true. But Gravity, they're putting their foot down here. And they want to get a win out of this one. Three to two as the kills. They're coming in slowly, but Gravity is making sure they find a lot more on the map. Nicely done without getting those kills. Always a hard task. You try to avoid the other team and get what you want, but it's definitely an impressive one. They're setting up a lot of awards. They're trying to set up mm -hmm. the awards on Gravity's side 
all the way up in Winter Fox's jungle so that they can move between mid and right. top. Threaten your inhib turret, threaten your tier two. Back and forth between them. So this is really good by the team because you saw them buy a bunch of wards on Keen and Cop when they backed. St. Vicious with the sight stone. But look at this. Cop Paragon, he's so far forward. That's going to be the teleport to the tunnel of Rek'Sai. Haunter's into the fight now. Watch them chunk the tunnel in. Here comes the equalizer now. They walked right into it. Avalon, Helios, all cooking down on that one. Poe Belter able to spit out great laser damage from the backside. But Keen, he's also floating around here on the side of the stage. And it looks like he may be ready to go back in. But the team, they all disengage, so that will not happen. We go for a one for three. Paragon on the front line gets caught out, but he immediately escapes without having to yep. use any of his summoners. And then the team comes back through. But we'll talk about that in a second, because Cop, he's caught out now. That's a dodge. A lot of damage missed out by Paragon. Whee! Funny Fufu everywhere he needs to be with that Dark Passage. With that Thresh, one yep. of his favorite champions. I know when he was making a name for himself, he was always on that champion. And he wasn't just a player who's like, I can land really good hooks. He's like, I can land really good hooks. My flay positioning to stop and stunt abilities was top tier. And then how he's getting the hooks lanterns in too. Oh, the lanterns, the same Saint's thing. A the deep. lanterns, the pressure. Saint definitely not expecting the teleport to come back on that one. Winter Fox almost grabs a kill off a nice TP to disengage. Keen is bottom right now, shoving waves, and they haven't dealt with him yet. Helios has to go towards that bottom lane. Yep. And there we go. Keen is actually going to back off and not apply pressure to this turret. Control that wave management, man. Gravity making sure that they, it's kind of like a rule of thumb. Keep it past the river, we'll be all right. <laughs> They're doing a good job so far. Let's take a look at this again. This is a beautiful equalizer here. This is one of those things where you look for the opportunity. You don't try he to pass it. it. But right here, it's like, boom. Let's hit four people across the line. Beautiful placement there. Poe Belter has to duck under it to get into Ooh. the fight and then he sees the threat of Keen off on the right, so he can't continue. LeBlanc's biggest job right there mm -hmm. was to put pressure on to Victor, put pressure on to Poe Belter. So Keen, even though he wasn't blowing people up, he was still the threat, because his zone had to be respected. Now we keep talking about that Rumble ulti. We also talk about it missing. If it does miss and Poe Belter can hit a nice Chaos Storm, that all is also pretty game-changing for a fight from Victor. So we saw that just at the end was the reason Gravity started peeling out. Pole Belter can hit that, get it to stick in the jungle. It's going to be tough. Then you're also looking at the equalizer. So many things. So many things they have to be careful of. Got a few more kills in for Gravity. Obviously going to make them more confident. And this year, once they have that confidence, they have not been afraid to keep making moves. This lane that's been constantly pressured here in the bottom now by Keen. Looks like everybody's going to take suit there, follow him, and start pressuring that up. The ward control is trying to be wrestled back here. Yep. Gravity has all of it in this bottom side. Their threat of a fifth dragon is pretty much just 13 minutes away if they continue to get these dragons. That would be a very, very early on. And that Paragon. makes a bigger threat of a dragon even more. Oh. Carry half HP. The support's going to take a few shots as well. They're just trying to get a little love tap damage on before they start wow. this one to make it easier. They're, they're here really early too. They show up a minute in advance. That's true. Just to Good poke point. them out. Just to stop them from getting ward coverage. Things get weird in that situation. Hey, just talked about how Bunny Fufu has really good flays to, stop, to stunt move blocks. Does it again right there. Yep. Everything about his Thresh is very well-rounded. He's not one of just one of those players where it's like, I got one thing I'm good at on Thresh. He's good at it all. See it over and over again. He makes a good case for it. Still holding strong. Obviously, Winter Fox knows it's going to be the fight here for Dragon, so they're keeping themselves poised for this. But the wards very much in favor of gravity in this one. So Double wards. <laughs> Double wards everywhere. More. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's Keen. Be a ward Keen. Fight. Keen a little too close. Keen laying on the ground by himself. The team turns tied here, and it looks like Dragon may actually go to Winter Fox. An error chalked up for Winter or Gravity there. Butterfingers on that one. Yeah. Keen. That's going to stop that dragon from going over them. Saint, he can try it, but he doesn't have flash. He'll have to get a lantern. And nope. Winter Fox get their first dragon of the game and stop the threat of a fifth. That dragon. was actually huge. That, to stop that dragon relieved so much pressure for Winter Fox. That would have put him on the iron long wait for number five. <laughs> yes, Gravity, they put so much time into that too. And Keen messes it up with the W, goes back, and then snaps back to the other one. It was very strange how... He yeah. just made a zigzag line 
basically Moot made a triangle. He was confused by all the wards. It's one of those things where you hit your W and then your R and then you forgot that you hit one of them. Right. And you swap you it back. You take the wrong one. Yeah, you take the wrong one. Unfortunate. Definitely a situation that can happen when you're trying to make those plays. Very easy. Get messed up in those finger movements. Oof. But like I was saying, they gave up so much for that in terms of time on Gravity's side because they had all the ward coverage in Winter Fox's right side jungle on their east side. And they spent, they dedicated about three minutes to it, two minutes, where they warded it up, pink warded it, swept everything, and then they made battle lines where they stopped Winter Fox from reestablishing their presence right. on that side. And the fa that's why they were there two minutes early, a minute early, because they just wanted to stop Winter Fox from getting in there. Yeah, most of those wards are still there. Yeah, and then Winter Fox on the way out get to clean up some pink wards, mm -hmm. get to basically get back what they were denied for three minutes. And they get a dragon on the back of it. So Keen, that one misplay, handing yeah. a little bit of life to Winter Fox over there. That's all it takes. I know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 4K in the lead now for Gravity. Hopefully no more misplays is what they are thinking coming into these next few minutes. Here's the thing, too, is you can't let that get to you either. Because if you're playing on the stage and you're nervous about that and you mess right. up, and you can't have a team that's going to bring you down. These guys got to encourage him, got to keep him up. Especially when you're on a champion like LeBlanc, who now has her void staff uh -huh. and can pop people. You have her to be sure that you can go in. It's her time to shine, and he needs the confidence to make moves like that, but not exactly like that. Well, we'll see if the first spike curbs his intentions any after that death. 2-1-2 two, two for him, 270. Actually, great CS in the mid lane by both of those guys. Pole Belter at 266, even with the pressure that he had kept strong in this game for the team. Crab control here for Saint. It's going to give Gravity and the rest of the team a little bit more run around. So they push Winter Fox off for now, but things are only getting tighter in this game. Next Dragon is going to have to be contested because it will mean number four for Gravity still. And then that five looms on the horizon. St. Vicious, very Ooh. aggressive. I guess they have the vision for it. There's a big wave in the top side that Gravity have to go deal yep. with. They're gonna have to cop go soak that up. But Poe Belter finally hitting his death cap Abyssal Scepter on top of his perfect hex core. So this is the item build that you should have at this point. The build path, he didn't get punished for it that much. It wasn't like That's we're gonna true. keep fighting you and keep fighting you because you don't have this much AP. Now he's online, now this Victor can start taking over and blowing people up and they're gonna put a lot of resources into protecting Poe Belter. Because he's not that assassin that can get in and out, he's a mid-range mage who has zone control. Right. Still has to watch his positioning a little bit, unless he's the one just controlling the storm. Still gotta watch out for that Chaos Storm ultimate. Really have a big factor on it. Looking around sweepers, wards, and trinkets. Getting some upgrades here, more so on the side of Winter Fox, good to see. Keeping those sweepers and trinkets upgraded to make sure they don't lose too much vision. The pink wards are still coming out. More so now in places that Winter Fox can keep those alive. They're losing a lot of money having to replace those over and over again. The ward coverage here. It's really... It's really scarce at the moment for gravity. A lot of their wards are getting cleared and expiring. They need to reestablish that. And Winter Fox are doing a good job of keeping up some pinks in crucial areas. They have the Baron under their control, but a lot of it is up towards the top side. The Dragon is in two minutes, and we saw gravity are very comfortable with going in here two minutes early. Yeah. And trying to force them out and keeping them out so that they allow the wards that might be in there to expire even without sweepers. Well, it's kind of the tell. This also should allow Winter Fox to set back up themselves again. They got the kill on Keen last time, but that was the mistake. I don't this think we'll see that. Okay, Paragon's going to back. I yeah. thought he'd get a little bit more of a push on it. But this is kind of the right play, because when you see them setting up at the Dragon two minutes before it's up, you have to go somewhere else. You have to allow them or punish them for that move. You have to like apply pressure to the top yeah. side of the map, which pulls one person, two people, whoever, away from the Dragon and then you get to group up as five and possibly start something. Great use here of Void Rush if necessary. They send Rek'Sai top lane. Hauntzer is going to stick with the team in the bottom for a little bit of siege pressure on the turret if they need it. And Saint's going to get a pretty good push on this. The team does not look like they're going to leave bottom for gravity. They're going to force Winter Fox to spread themselves thin here if Saint keeps going. Not the quickest pusher, but it looks like he'll stick with it. His nearest tunnel to the fight that would happen. Not too bad. Is not that bad at all. 
right by that blue for the side of Winter Fox. They decide to back off. That was the pressure just for Dragon here. And again, this kind of not a really a game of respect just yet. They obviously respect the fight of Winter Fox, but they don't want to take anything until they get their dragons. Saints Gravity gonna, is really set on that. He's going to keep pushing, though. He might not be as set on it as we would think. He's going to continue to apply pressure to the top. Now they're going to shove out the mid wave a couple seconds before the dragon comes up. They might be okay just giving up this dragon for turret pressure. You're right. He def definitely stuck with it. Still has the tunnels to get back to the team if necessary. And Saint Solo, top turret, going coast to coast on that one to help break down the second tier turret. One more left in the bottom lane for Winter Fox. They're starting to lose a lot. Global gold going over to gravity now with all those turrets. It's just going to make them too much to handle. Avalon doesn't go up top to answer. And they give up the dragon to gravity. Very, very weird play there from Winter Fox. Very kind of... Gravity is running them around the map. Especially with that, would we, or could we have seen... Oh, oh wait oh. a minute. Going on to Hanser. This would be a huge hit for them. Keen is still alive. He can still... Oh. Oh, no, Hanser gets out and the Equalizer goes down. That means there could be a re-engage. That's from Cop and Buddy Fufu. Saints already in the fight trying to tank the entire team. Paragon's on the backside. Gets hooked out. Bunny Fufu with the laser shot. They're able to completely ace Winter, er, Winter Fox. Wow. That fight was Bunny Foo Foo from start to finish there. Amazing plays on that Thresh. And Hauntzer still surviving and dealing more damage after the fight. Just gravity with a great push all the way down the mid lane here. They're going to get an inhibitor turret for this. I uh, yeah, thought to myself, would Bunny Foo Foo make plays this game? I wonder. He has Thresh. You know, it's common. And oh <laughs> my word, all the lanterns he's been throwing, that mid fight hook to make sure he locked down Paragon on a champion that's quite slippery as an AD carry. Plays all around. See it again. This is just absolutely beautiful. I'll hey, Hauntzer was dead to rights here. Flash E. And yeah, dead to rights, exactly. This point, he Ooh. gets the Lantern out. Keen immediately, it's like, tag me in, bro. Blows up Poe Belter, and then the hook onto Altec, and then Bunny Fufu comes back into the fight just to continue it. And Haunts are still able to output damage at this point. That Predicted that. Wow. Threw it to the right. Paragon walked right into it. Big step up there. It's what the fans were waiting for. The explosion fight. And it looked like Winter Fox had it on the initiation. It's vision control, though. This is all vision control for gravity because Winter Fox don't see those members coming from the fog of war. Right. They, they saw don't have those two they were just fighting Hauntzer. Yeah, they don't have deep wards. They don't even have shallow wards. Speaking of not seeing Hauntzer, he's behind them right now. Oh, man. Laying down the Equalizer in their escape path. They're kind of forced to stay under the turret, taking a few shots. Avalon takes those hits. Cop able to deliver the DPS on the back line as they are pushing. Paragon down on the back line of Winter Fox. This is given the 80 carries regular carries on the side of gravity all the time to just fire off their DPS. Beautiful flank from Hauntzer there. Doesn't even have to use TP to execute it. It's the ward coverage again from Winter Fox. And Hauntzer's just going to pick up another kill for himself here. Get the farm, Avalon. Starting forest fires. Oh. Huh? Oh. Oh. And it looks like they're getting themselves in position for the Baron here. It be taking this guy down easily there, uncontested after the ace onto Winter Fox and Gravity really put their foot down here, coming out 35 minutes in. The last two minutes have been completely theirs as they run away with the game. And big props to Gravity as a team so far, because yeah. Winter Fox has a composition that they want a Cataclysm and then throw the Chaos Storm right on top of it. And that actually happens here. You see the Cataclysm come down, and then the Chaos Storm immediately on top of this damage pile. And they're just trying to deal as much damage as possible from Poe Belter, but he gets blown up. He is the priority target here on that Victor, and they're just taking advantage of his positioning. When you flank a Victor, you cut off all his escape options, and he has to be very tanky at that point. And Victors rarely get tanky, especially this early on. That was basically the same fight, right? Yeah. It was pretty much the same so thing crazy. over again. Oh, big plays coming out. Gravity knows they can take these now. The confidence is going to start leading in. We definitely didn't see that Keen was shook off that first miss oh, yeah. we saw that almost gave Winter Fox a bit of an edge back into this one. He's still going. He's like, I got this. I, I got it. Don't worry. It's not going to tilt me. <laughs> He's good. He repaired it. Just a flat tire. Get it fixed up. Right back in it. Two minutes on to Dragon. That will put Gravity in their final form with Baron as well. 
And with this push, it does not look like the inhibitor turret will last very long here. The Baron's going to last about the time that it'll take them to end up establishing control of the dragon, getting that fifth dragon for them. So these are very well-timed objectives around That's each other. Point. Cop, he's been CSing like mad this game. The fact that they're shoving side waves. Gravity played against CLG the other day. And I'm almost positive they went, we need to work on our wave management. We need to work yeah. on shoving side waves and allowing those to build pressure that Winter Fox has to answer. And then while they're answering it, you take something else. You pressure something else. Getting ward control of somebody's jungle yeah. is an objective in and of its own. Don't okay. always have to get a turret. They've kept it going all game long. Also, the, the threat of this pressure across the map, the omnipresence of St. Vicious as well as Haunter being able to get everywhere they want. And Winter Fox really cannot answer. Having to send Paragon over alone can get some wave clear out. It looks like Saint is just going to get enough minions in to keep doing slight damage to the turret with the Baron buff on. This is the struggle here Winter Fox has to work with for 40 more seconds. Then they might get some breathing room, but then they're going to have to fight for drag. It's hardly breathing room. That's like coming up for air <laughs> when, you, when you're diving. Push her back down. <laughs> oh. 15 to 6. Looks like more kills to be racked up here. 505 for Cop on this Graves pickup. Also picked himself up the Quicksilver Sash to make sure he's not a target of all tech or Avalon. There's always the chance that that fight goes in the favor, especially at these turrets. They do quite a bit of damage to your tanks, even if they get underneath them. Oh. Slow going for gravity. Definitely good to see as well that they're not struck or forcing themselves, I should say, to push into a bad situation. Yeah, they're going to keep these waves shoved up, and Cop is actually going to solo the last dragon so that they can continue wave pressure, not give that up, and then they can reconvene. You'll t they'll shove the side waves out, and then they'll go middle, take that. Ba -ba -ba. Full is that aspect. the fifth dragon? That's <laughs> the... Oh, so they're not full form. You're right, the Baron wore off just in time. That is the fifth dragon, however. Five, not three. And they are going to be rolling into the base. It could be kind of a last-ditch effort here for Winter Fox if they can get a fight. The crowd control is going to have to come from Avalon and all tech. So eyes on the tanks. Winter Fox Helios can get in there, but he might pop quite quick. Winter Fox have fallen short in ward control, team fighting, and objective wave management. Mm -hmm. Gravity has had their number at every turn. Wave clear from Paul Belter's laser is keeping Gravity at bay for only a few more minutes. The Gravity field goes out as well to stop the minions. So much damage off the collateral damage to start the fight. You get that two damage burn, and they just muscle this turret down immediately. It looks like they're going to be heading for the Nexus, Irene. 42 minutes on this one. Aspect of the Dragon, still quite a bit of time to burn here for Gravity. And they say, let's take a deep breath. We got more to take, just more on the map. <laughs> there's, there's camps that spawn. <laughs> there's more gold to take on this map and to deny from Winter Fox. Yeah. They're just going to systematically tear them apart. Go for the victory that is methodical. Get all of their base, get their inhibitors. Winter Fox, they might have to make a last stand right here. So a little bit of more practice with this composition. It worked out very well for Gravity. As I said, they're taking this game back to go one and one on Winter Fox if they can capitalize here, bring themselves to seven and seven in the standings. Right now, Winter Fox is staving just that off. Poe Belcher has been able to farm throughout this game to 408, but not getting the kills that he needed did not catapult him into the position of a carry for the team. It's up to these last chances here, Zyrene. It's going to be very tough. Only those Nexus turrets stand with this last inhibitor turret in their eyes. They're waiting for minion waves, not just in this lane, because they're not walking up to hit the turret. They're waiting for them to hit the base. And Winter Fox, they can't get the engage nope. they're looking for. That's Righteous Glory and Solar Flare blown. That might be the go for Gravity to just walk up now over and over again with the QSS on cop. So if he gets caught, he still has a way to get out. Oh, Bunny Foo Foo wanted the hook, so Winter Fox knows that they are not afraid to start the siege under the turret if necessary, and I don't think it's going to last this minutes. wave. Go. There's one hook, Pole Belter gets hit! Oh! The flash in from St. Vicious, and he deletes Pole Belter. The rest of the team's going to fly through on this one, and it is St. Vicious again to the back line, just being a brute for gravity this game. The ace comes up as Bunny Foo Foo solidifies the last kill, and the Nexus turrets are finally in reach for gravity to start tearing them apart. A very slow game to start this one off, but it was just both teams trying to find what they wanted, and the door opened for gravity in the mid-game.
they take down Winterfox. Very clean lane swap this game. No advantage is given yeah, over. Instead, point. gravity dictating the pace of the early game and the mid game. One mistake from Keen, and that's it. It didn't affect him. Shook it off. Now they're 7-7. Seven and seven. They're actually tied with Liquid again. Oh, <laughs> that they are. It's going to be the forever fight now between those teams instead of forever fourth. So Gravity with the win, the hug, the AD carries, and the supports, obviously. They know what it's like to switch back and forth. They do it. We fill in Q. But a great game played once again coming out from Gravity. Bunny Foo Foo on point with Thresh all game long, and St. Vicious taking things into his own hands in the late game. It was kind of a one for each part of the game. We saw Bunny Foo Foo doing good things. Then we had the Rumble Ultimates from oh, yeah. Ponser in that mid game. St. Vicious going crazy in that game. St. Vicious had a lot of kill participation in this game. And then when he got to split push, he just continued to pressure that lane. And yep. there was no answer for him at that point. You can see they're happy about his performance. Very happy indeed. Winter Fox going to five and nine. Still chances to climb in the standings. They face Team 8 and Team Impulse next week. Impulse is looking very strong, so they're definitely going to have to look to that match. And Team 8 as well. They've been grabbing themselves some wins over the past few weeks. So Tough games at the end here, and every team, they don't want to give up anything. No, this, so definitely playing hard. There's only 18 games in the season. After today, there will only be five more for these two teams. Yep. So every win counts for climbing up those standings, especially since most teams are one or two games apart. So there's a lot of movement that can happen if a team just has a nice surge. It's true. Looking at these games, as I said, Gravity has TSM to start next week. It'll be, or start when we get back, obviously. It'll be nice to watch those guys at Katowice and kind of get an inside look at what they're trying to do, what they could bring back when they come home. They actually, TSM actually currently has the uh, linear championship belt. They got it back today <laughs> from TSM. And now it's going to go internationally. Where's it going to go? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm excited about. The belt gets switched all the time. But so the end of this split has shown that teams are trying new things, yeah. but they're also shoring up weaknesses. Maybe that, you know, they're finding that come out from what we say on the desk. That was wave management cleared. Now, they weren't like they talked about wave management. I'm sure it was all over Reddit. It was all over everything. But they are taking it into consideration. <laughs> and we're seeing these things be fixed. They, they have a coach and an analyst who are probably right. going to it, break it down for them. I trust LS to look at these types of things and be like, that it was is us. <laughs> it, was, it was us all along, you know. <laughs> It's, it's free league advice. That's right. We're going to go and <laughs> throw it over to the guys on our analyst desk.